right, thank everyone for tuning in right now to Sparks Radio. This is your host, DJ Sparks. You can reach me at sparksradio.caster.fm as well. And don't forget, we got the Drew Hill tickets coming up in just a little bit. Right after this interview, uh, we're going to do callers for the first set of tickets to go see Drew Hill August 27th in Colorado Springs. And as mentioned earlier on the show, we got on the phone. The Hammer herself, Miss Tierra Brown. What's good with you? How you do? How's it going? All right, everything is going well. So tell me first of all, you are a LFL player. That's the Legends Football League. So how did you get started uh, with the Legends Football League? I actually, it's it's funny. Um, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so like everything is on social media nowadays, and I um I was looking for events in the area um, and I just happened to come across a tryout uh, Facebook event for a tryout for um, the Denver Dream and it was in like the Aurora area and so I showed up oh wow <laughs> and uh, yeah and I tried out and I uh, they asked me to come play for them wow I hear that. That's all right, though. I mean, I never even knew that there was a football league like this until, you know, I saw you on the Facebook page. And I was like, what? Wait a minute. There's women that play football and hit hard like that? I was like, what? (laughs) That was, I mean, it just blew me away because I never knew, you know, there was a football league. So what's what's some of the places that you guys play? Do you travel around the country just like the regular men's football team? Or what do you do? So, Legends is very similar to um, the NFL in in that we have, um, you know, most of the major cities in the United States have or had a team at one point. Um, it's, so, like, and there's four teams in the Western Conference. There's four teams in the Eastern Conference right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, it's been bigger. Uh, it's, but right now so there's denver seattle has a team la has a team and um chicago uh atlanta so a lot of um a lot of the the, the major cities have teams and it's funny you'll notice that a lot of um what most of the teams their colors actually uh match the color of the the sports team of that city so like seattle they have the the green and the blue and um, Denver, we have the Broncos colors. Okay. And um, yeah, so we we travel. Um, we've played uh, Chicago. We played in Chicago just recently, and it was Seattle before that. So we do travel, and um, then we hope there's also um, leagues across across seas too. So um, there's um, a Canadian league. It, it's actually it's a pretty rapidly growing sport. Um, I will say though, because a lot of people seem to have this misconception that you know we get paid like um, NFL players, and mm. we do not get paid like that. Um, so a lot of, and I think that's kind of it's, it's restricting in that you know if there's not money in the league like that, you know obviously if you can't afford to have terrible teams, they they will cut your team, and that's. And to be honest, our team was in jeopardy of being cut this year because of our record. So um, we fought, and they they um, they're going to bring us back next year. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, we were definitely in jeopardy of getting cut because I mean, teams cost money. You know, to travel it costs money, and um, yeah, if there's no money, and you're, you're if you're not winning. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that. Well, um, wow, so, so so tell me a little bit about what uh, some of the, you know, what does it cost to maybe uh, get a team? Is there any any figures that you can, like, give me or anything like that? Because maybe there's some way um, that my radio station here could help, uh, you know, promote the league and be able to assist in trying to get some funds. Um, so I, I wouldn't know a number of what it would cost, um to bring like a, a completely new team to a city, but it is, um, we do have sponsors. So mm-hmm. a lot of, and a lot of times the sponsors are usually local. So like mm-hmm. a lot of, I think some of our sponsors for the Denver Dream are like, like a tanning salon. And I think, you know, we, we work with Budweiser Event Center up in Loveland. That's where our games are at. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you have to think about like venue, 
you know, where you're going to have games at, um, in regards to, like, practices and stuff like that, that's all um, done on the team level, so, you know, we run practices, um, but, you know, coaching, you got to think about the coaching staff and the training staff, and, you know, you have to have funds for all that stuff, so, um, yeah, the uniforms, all that uniforms. stuff. Yeah, uniforms. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of like game day preparation as well. So like, um, and like, and I don't know how how it goes like with the NFL, but for us, like on game days, we have to show up at like eight thirty in the morning, and it's a day full of like photo shoots and a lot of stuff to promote the game that night. So a lot of like walkthroughs on camera and interviews and um, and stuff of that nature. Oh, okay, so that's a requirement before every game? Before every game, yeah, because we have to, um, I mean, we actually have a really, like Denver, even though we didn't do very good this year, we have a pretty good fan base, I would say. Like, um, they stayed for the whole game, even if we were losing. and. Um, so we have to, you know, kind of get people hyped for the games, and so a lot of a lot of the promo is is required for us to be doing. Cause, you know, you gotta help you gotta help make the league better in itself. So yeah, well, I, I would say them uniforms alone, <laughs> those things right <laughs> there. Well, wait, I did go to a game just for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, man, I'm telling you, but, um, you know, for those of you just tuning in right now, we're talking to uh, LFL football sensation, rising star, Tierra Brown of the Denver Dream. And um, let, let, me, let me ask you this, Tierra. Now, I know that, um, you know, there's a lot of animosity between um, a lot of girls maybe on the team, uh, maybe from other teams around the league and stuff like that. Because, you know, I was watching some video of you, and you was getting pretty hyped up because a girl punched you in your lip and uh, you kind of took her out you know on one of the plays so is that would that go on a lot with a lot of the different players in the, in the league yeah and that's actually <laughs> that's kind of minor compared to some of the stuff that I've seen um, in previous years wow there was, um, there was one girl she played I believe she was on Pittsburgh team or no, she was she was on Omaha's team, and I think it was a Pittsburgh player that she actually punched the girl in the face. Mm. The girl didn't have a helmet on. She was on the sidelines, but she was um, trash talking her. So she went over to her and punched her right in the face. And I think she was suspended. I'm not sure. I think it might have been an indefinite suspension for something like that. But oh, wow. there's a lot of you know trash talking that goes on amongst girls because girls are catty and yeah. <laughs> I mean, like but so even you know amongst the girls on your team. Um, sometimes the girls and the coaches and then of course girls uh, on different teams have a lot of you know animosity towards each other especially the rivals Wow! Wow! So, so what? What is, what is Denver's rival? What? Yeah, it's got to be the like the team that's like the colors of the Raiders. <laughs> oh, the LA. Oh yeah. <laughs> we didn't play them, and that's funny you say that because the Raiders are my favorite team. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we don't really have a set rival just because this is our first year back in the league. Oh okay. But like. For example, this past weekend, Chicago and Atlanta, they played each other, and that's like a huge kind of rival. Um, but we don't we don't have one yet, and it'll probably end up being L.A. Uh, yeah, <laughs> L.A. or Seattle. <laughs> yep, <laughs> more than likely. That's right. That's right. But um, you know, I I, I really uh, enjoy watching some of the clips. Uh, enjoy watching the hits you put on that girl that uh, when you took out of bounds, you know. I mean, man, it seems like uh, y'all really hit like super, super hard. So is it really, you know, that intense when you're out there on the field? It is really that intense. Um, it's... <laughs> wow. I When I first went for the tryout, I didn't know what to expect. And... Um, then, you know, wrote flash forward to the first game day, and I think I took a really, really hard hit on mm -hmm. the very first play. And after that, it was like, oh, wake up time. Like, this is not, this is not a joke. You are out here, and if you don't hit somebody, you're going to get hit. Yeah, it's, it's real. Um, <laughs> yeah, and on practice, it's full pass for practice, so it's a lot of contact, and... 
I don't know, it also goes like the coaches, like they, they'll, they'll tell you and, you know, um, I don't, I forget. They, uh, they'll, we'll do some drills. Like this, I, I remember one practice, we get three hours of almost hitting, like, because they were saying that we weren't hitting hard enough. Wow. Practice actually before the Chicago game. And at one point, like, <laughs> I remember I got pissed because I got knocked down really hard. Um, they kept making me go back out there. He's like, nope, do it again. Do it again until you get it right. Do it again until you get it right. And Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's all right, though. I mean, but uh, it seems like you got it together because, you know, you came out there and you've been doing uh, well. You know, I can uh, tell that you're going to be a rising star. You continue with the league. And uh, congratulations to you for uh, making the team, you know, first of all. And, um, you know, thank you for doing this interview as well. I definitely appreciate that. So, um, you know, well, what are some of the ticket costs like uh, for some of the games? Is it really expensive like the, the NFL games or is it reasonable? What's the ticket cost like? It's reasonable. Um, I mean, you can get a ticket anywhere from like 20 and then they go up mm -hmm. 60, 80. Um, and I, I don't even know, I, I don't know if it differs by like uh, city, but I know ours, like a lot of the tickets were in the $60 range. Okay. Is it the same uh, type of rules? You know, you, 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 you score the seven points, you know, for three uh, for a field goal. Is it the same type of rules as regular football? Similar, so we, um, instead of 11 on the field, we'll have seven. Okay. And um, we do, I mean, obviously it's a touchdown, it's for six points, and then we don't do like, um, like a field goal. Uh-huh. So if you get a touchdown, you have to go for the extra point, either pass or run or, you know, however you want to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, but pretty much it is, I don't think, we don't have like a touchback rule, I don't think, or anything like that. Um, but in terms of like penalties, like, you know, false starts or face masks or um, pass interference, all that stuff exists. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I definitely appreciate you for coming on to the show, doing this interview. And, uh, you know, so give me a light about everything that's going on in the uh, LFL. And I definitely want to come to some games and get more involved. So what, what is the what is the season? Is it uh, right before the NFL season? Your season ends at the NFL season? How what, What's the season like? When does it start and when does it end? Well, it's right before. So um, we just had our... our conference championship this past weekend and then the Legends Cup which is the Super Bowl of the LFL is um, coming up in a couple of weeks and so then we'll go into well, Denver's already in the off season but everyone will be in the off season and then uh, come December we actually are going to have a um, like a massive open tryout and uh -huh. we're going to draw you know between 200 300 women to come out and and um try out and then we would narrow it down to about 50 and then hopefully um like in january is when most teams will start practicing um so okay in january for training camp cause that's when training camp is snow. training camp in the snow what <laughs> yeah. well so i mean our facility and that's i like that we played at budweiser because it was indoor oh okay but a lot of teams like chicago they're outside uh i think omaha is outside so yeah there's it just it depends and the girls were practicing in the snow though so like wow in the bikinis that y'all wear so we're not for practice. In practice, uh, you know. Oh, okay. I was, about, yeah. I was yeah. about to say, what? We actually practice in a lot of clothes. And uh, all the girls will tell you, um, <laughs> they prefer to practice with clothes on just because, I mean, even when it comes to, like, getting a turf burn or stuff like that, um, scratches, like, bruising, it's less likely, um, obviously, the more clothed you are. I can imagine. I can imagine because you guys play on it's, it. It looks like turf and grass. Is that correct? Yep, we do both. Wow! I can only imagine the burns you get on turf. Ooh wee! Mm -hmm. And where? <laughs> right? Yeah, you'll, you'll notice in some of the games, like the girls. I don't even know what they're called because I don't wear them, but they are like these little these sticker things that they'll put on their thighs and on their butt to prevent the burn, or actually like 
make it less um oh yeah, less yeah. <laughs> i can only imagine oh my goodness is, is that a requirement uniform though that you guys wear the bikinis because i know it's probably for more show and more publicity to get more people to come out to the games and stuff like that it is a requirement and that is that deters some people i will say because like um we do we definitely have women that obviously do not want to wear um bikinis and they won't so they won't you know come to the tryouts or they won't watch or you know stuff like that but yeah. for the most part I, everyone that's in the league they understand that it's, it's a requirement and um for the past couple of years well actually this past year they've they've kind of tossed around the idea of um making modifying the uniform so that you know we just they they're not bikini but maybe like some type of legging material um but that just never came to fruition this season but it has been i mean the bikinis are definitely one of the um more controversial things about the league yeah but i i mean i i, I like it personally because it made me watch you know it made me look and see you like wow this is like really happening right now and like these ladies are like really playing hard and they really like i was like wow this is interesting so i would sit and watch a whole entire game you know so it is appealing but i understand where you're coming from from that standpoint too as a woman you know you don't want to be revealing too much you know what i'm saying you want to be be taken seriously as an athlete and a player and i can understand where that comes into play as well you know so so you think it's going to change eventually the, the the uniform um i don't know i mean i like i personally and anyone will, that you know anyone can tell you i like the uniforms i'm a very body positive person like i work out a lot so you know i kind of it, it's something that i take pride in at least you know being able being able for people to see like hey she you know she has a hot body yeah, yeah, but is is it comfortable for you as well when you're playing out there? Is it more comfortable? It's comfortable, I would say. Um, well, yes and no, because um, we do because it's less that we're wearing, and obviously, like it's more chances for something to be exposed. Yeah. So we have to be like really, you know, taped up up there, so you know nothing pops out. If it does, you don't see nothing. Yeah. And there's been instances, you know, where a girl's entire behind is out because, you know, she's making a run and someone goes and they grab onto her bikini shorts and pull. Oh, yeah. So, um, that, I would say that part of it is, is definitely uncomfortable. But, I mean, when you're running around in, in pads, obviously, the, the less clothes. I would think the better. Yeah, I I, I, I tend to agree with you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 amazing that you guys uh, that you guys do that, and it's amazing that you have your your own league, you know. And I and I do commend you for being a female football player, you know. what I'm saying because a lot of females ain't ain't that tough, but um, you you something else. I, I've I've seen you hit, so. Um, you know, congratulations on all that stuff. But uh, thank you so much for, like I said, coming on to the show and uh, giving me this interview and giving me more insight of what the uh, LFL is like. And um, you know, when, when you guys uh, are off season right now for Denver, so you you guys have, uh, I guess, tr uh, tryouts and uh, training camp coming up in uh, in a little while. Yeah. So most of the girls in the off season, what we'll be doing, um, we'll all be training. Um, and we do sports specific training we'll all be in the gym um, and then we also do a lot of recruiting so oh, okay. obviously because we are a new team and we do need the exposure and we need people to know about us and we need to attract talent we have to recruit so each of us you know we all work out at different gyms so we'll have like recruitment events at the gyms and you know sometimes um another good place to find people would be at sporting events, you know. So yeah. we'll go to, like, Rockies games or Broncos games and, you know, be all decked out in our gear and then just, you know, get people talking about it and then hopefully not only raise, um, you know, viewers so that we get more people to watch, but then we also can um, find some hidden gyms in the city to come play for us. So. Yeah, is it is it televised, like, on regular TV or, or anything like that? Your games? Um, so it has been in the past, and even it's kind of weird in um, this year because, like, we'll play. Um, you all, the games are all on Saturday, so we'll play one week, but the actual game will not air until the following week. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, I got you. So it's not a live type thing that you guys could do. It's 
not. And I think that goes just back to the, the expenses thing because um, you would, you know, need that, that type of money to be able to, because it's, it's a whole production. Like they do, and the guys behind the scenes, they, they do a really good job of, of making it something fun to watch. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do a lot of, you know, behind the scenes technical stuff to, to the footage and, and, and everything like that. So, um, then they air it the following week. I got you. I got you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I definitely appreciate it. And once again, for those of you just tuning in, uh, we're talking to of the Denver Dream, the LFL uh, Football League, uh, Miss Tierra Brown. And uh, thank you so much uh, for coming on to the show right here on Sparks Radio. And we'll definitely get the word out about uh, the LFL. I'll keep running the commercial. Um, you know, maybe even uh, start coming to some of the games and stuff like that. And I can also uh, probably talk to someone at the league. About about doing uh, an internet uh, live podcast, you know, where I can come and uh, be up on the, um, you know, the balcony or whatever, and then just film you guys and uh, have it go live and then uh, commentate on it and people can watch it online live. We could do something like that. It'll help a lot, too. Yeah, most definitely. All right. Well, yeah, I'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. All right. And then probably give away some tickets, too, um, to uh, some of you guys' games whenever you we'll get ready to start the season up a little bit. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind as well. That way it can be a lot more people to know about uh, you guys and what you guys do. I'll give away some tickets to some of your games. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, that would be dope. All right. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. Well, we're getting ready to go into giving away some tickets here to Drew Hill. And also, uh, Case and Amanda Perez going down August 27th, and that's going to be in Colorado Springs. Uh, we got that coming up next. You got a song you want to hear, sweetheart? I'll throw something down for you real quick. Uh, I love Case, so go ahead and put some Case on it. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll give you some of that new Case. You know what I'm saying? Something from his brand new album that's already out that we're playing right here on Sparks Radio. So thank you so much, Miss Tierra Brown, for coming on to the show. Once again, Tierra Brown of the Denver Dream, the LFL team um, that uh, is in the league. So we definitely appreciate you so much for coming on to the show. Good luck to you guys next year. Good luck to you on the off season. Stay healthy. And I'll definitely uh, keep people abreast about uh, coming to your games and what you guys are doing. Thank you so much. You're perfect. Thanks for having me. All right. your music he speaks your mind and he's got you locked on
my heart Although you fought hard, you had to give in I messed up in love and lied To know when something feels this right I gotta hold on, keep both of us strong Let nobody leave One team playing to regain its pride while the other tries to maintain pace with the league's elite teams. Next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better not the get out of it. The beautiful Pacific Northwest is playing host to LFL Football Night. A lot of people don't know that we're out there playing real football. And so, you know, they'd see us in our uniforms and then it, it takes you getting hit one good time for you to be like, okay, this is, this is the real deal. I think it just again goes back to the, the the notion that you know football is just something for guys. Like um, I have a son, and he you know he's a little boy who loves football, and his father is a football player. And so when I see that, I'm like, okay, well you know it's not just for guys. Let me go out there and, and, and you know kind of try and break that stereotype. And I think that's that's what Legends does. It shows you that you know, it's not we're more than just pretty girls out here. He's a real athlete. Let's go, let's make it happen. Hey, we played this team before, to me they wasn't that good. We gotta play better, we gotta step up, give 110%, let's do what we gotta do. When I say dream, you say team. Dream! Team! Dream! Team! Dream! Team! Dream! Team! Let's go, baby, let's go.
you know, we haven't had the best start. Um, we're definitely a work in progress for sure. We're learning, it's our first year, but we're doing our best and we are growing and we're getting better with every game and every week.